Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Today, Nature on Your Door is on the road again. We're in the middle of the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, and I'm here with Mix Kayak and Canoe Rental. This is going to be an exciting day. In this episode today, we're going to talk about the ecology of the Pine Barrens, talk about some of its unique flora and fauna. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. This Pine Barrens experience was the result of a quick trip I took to New Jersey with my wife, where our main purpose was to come up and tag horseshoe crabs with American Littoral Society. If you haven't seen my horseshoe crab tagging episode, you need to check those out. And we found ourselves with an afternoon to spare, so we had Mick's shuttle drop us off here at the Wading River at Hawkins Bridge. The Wading River has got to be one of the most beautiful rivers in the Pine Barrens. And here it gives us a glimpse of the lowlands of the Pine Barrens that are dominated by Atlantic white cedar swamps, pitch pine, and hardwood swamps. In this video, I wanted to give you a real appreciation for exactly what is the Pine Barrens? Well, the Pine Barrens is a unique ecosystem, and it's the largest remaining Atlantic coastal Pine Barrens on the entire east coast of the United States. Within this expanse of the Pine Barrens ecosystem, 1.1 million acres of it has been designated as the Pinelands Natural Reserve. That reserve alone is 22% of the state of New Jersey, and this area is also designated designated as an international bioreserve that's bigger than either Grand Canyon National Park or Yosemite National Park. And it's not a barren ecosystem at all. It has 850 species of plants, with 92 threatened or endangered. It's made up of upland forests that include the unique four foot tall pygmy pines. And the lowlands I'm canoeing through also includes the heaths with high bush blueberries, huckleberries, and bear berries. It has 39 species of mammals, 300 species of birds, 59 reptiles, and 43 of those are considered threatened or endangered. It's so rich in flora and fauna why is it called the Pine Barrens? Well, it is dominated by pine, but the early settlers gave it the name the Barrens because when they tried to clear the land and plant crops, they weren't able to grow anything. And the reason they weren't able to grow anything is this soil is notoriously low in nutrients. It's 85 to 90% quartz. It's also rich in iron and aluminum but very, very low in organic matter. The physical properties of sand cause water to percolate through it very quickly, and it goes fast down into the aquifers stored below this land. And any nutrients that are in soil are quickly leached out. So the early settlers abandoned it for farming, but they did use the trees for building and for making charcoal. And in some parts of the Pine Barrens, its history includes iron furnaces that use the iron-rich sands to make iron but that was soon taken over by the West where the iron ores were much much richer and much more cost productive to make iron out there. So that gave rise to many ghost towns that are scattered throughout the Pine Barrens and many legends to go along with that. So my window today the Pine Barrens is from canoeing down through these coastal black water streams and rivers. This black or tea-colored water comes from tannins and leachates draining from the pines in the swamp areas, as well as iron precipitating from the water which creates rust-colored deposits and a reddish color to the water as well. It's really, really beautiful and it gives rise to the unique flora and fauna of this area. I am most intrigued by the Atlantic white cedar that is a abundant in these swampy sections along the river. Their leaves are characterized by this unique scale-like foliage and its peeling bark and magnificent size and height is nothing like I've ever seen before. I've never been in a white cedar forest like this. Not surprisingly, my van 
is lined with tongue and groove cedar. It's a lightweight wood. It's resistant to de decay, which is great for condensation in vans. And it's also resistant to warping at varying temperatures. So it's the perfect finish for the interior of my travel van. I'm also fascinated by these pitch pines that occur here in abundance. You can recognize them by this characteristic thick, broken up, scaly bark, which helps protect the trees from fires. And their needles come in a characteristic clusters of three. Pine Barrens is another ecosystem that revolves around periodic fires to maintain its ecology. And there are both accidental fires and controlled burns to help manage it. And for example, the dominance of the pitch vine is fire dependent. And it's Pine cones only drop seeds when they've been the, exposed to the heat of a fire. Pitch pines were valuable as a source of pitch for waterproofing ships back in its day. And its high resin made it very decay resistant. So it was used for shipbuilding, in timbers, for mines, and in railroad ties. Below the pine barrens are underlain by 3,000 square miles of the Kirkwood Chansey Aquifer. This aquifer contains 17 trillion gallons of fresh, clean water. So here is almost another surreal natural resource that requires both protection and regulation due to its demand for drinking water, businesses, and agriculture. There is so much to the Pine Barren, so many unique ecosystems within it. There are so many unique species here that my plan is to return again soon to do a special feature on the four foot tall pygmy pines that occur across the uplands and also to see the abundance of carnivorous plants which are by the way typical of low nutrient acidic soils where plants get their nitrogen phosphates not from the soil but from the insects they capture above the soil i hope you learned something about this unique ecosystem today and gained a little appreciation for what the pine barrens really are i only scratched the surface of what they're really about and gave you a small window to look into this pine barren ecosystem well, we just got back thanks to the shuttle here at mix kayak and canoe rental in the pine barrens we had a fantastic trip I don't get any kickbacks for doing this, but wherever I go, if I can help promote a local business that does great quality work, I'll do it. And this was a fantastic trip. I really recommend if you want to see one of the world's greatest true wilderness areas, an incredible, diverse, complicated ecosystem, check out the Pine Barrens. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do, give me a like, please subscribe, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.